What's going on guys? Welcome back to Sector for Nerds. I'm Ryan Brower and today I'm here to talk with you guys about Star Wars The Bad Batch Episode 9 Bounty Lost which was and I know I sound like a broken record at this point because I've said it for basically epi every episode but this was another amazing episode of The Bad Batch. People this show is so freaking awesome. I really don't understand where people aren't enjoying this show. Like if you have not been able to find at least one one good episode from this show, then I don't know what the hell you're looking for, because my god, this show is great. There's new adventures every week, you're building characters, you bring back characters from other TV shows and movies, and you have them have uh, interactions with other characters, such as what we saw in this episode between Cad Bane and Fennec Shand. And trust me, you guys, we're gonna talk about their fight, but before we do that, make sure you guys like this video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. If this is your first time watching, I like to do a lot of reaction videos to Star Wars fan films or Star Wars tribute videos. I also like to do a lot of discussions such as what we're doing here today with Bad Batch and we're currently doing it with Loki as well. So hopefully you guys have been checking those out if you haven't already. Marvel What If is coming up soon so we'll be doing discussion videos on that. Once the Book of Boba Fett comes out, we'll be doing discussions on that. So hopefully you guys are staying tuned because a lot of great content coming here on my channel. Let's talk about this episode, you guys. So at the start of the episode, we've got the Bad Batch versus Crosshair again, but this time it was in ship to ship and it was very brief because they ended up making the jump to hyperspace. Hunter was obviously against the idea because he wanted to find Omega, but as they uh, Bad Batch pointed out, it's like, okay, but this bounty hunter is long gone. We ain't going to be able to find her here. And so they end up leaving. I think with Crosshair, you guys, I feel like we're getting to a point where he may end up no longer being of much use to the Empire because of just how badly injured he is, I feel like the Empire is going to look at that and go, well, we don't have time for weakness. What's that one guy from Jedi Fallen Order, Cal's friend at the beginning of the game, what's he say? Like, to the Empire, we're all just expendable. So I feel like that's going to apply to Crosshair at some point. And then we get to Toto. Poor Toto's leg is still broken and Omega offers to fix it and at first he's like no but then eventually he's like yes and then she fixes the leg and then she ends up disarming him as well. But now we're kind of jumping ahead. There is a another thing that I want to talk about real quick. We get into the room where there's three Kaminoans. We see Lama Su who obviously is the head of Kamino. We see Nala Se. But then there was Tan Wee as well and I actually had picked up on that before too. I'm like is that Tan Wee still? Standing there, and then sure enough, they called her by her name, so that was cool to see Ton Wee in this episode. Just as like a callback to Attack of the Clones, because I feel like we never saw her in Clone Wars, so to see her here, like, I mean, it makes sense. I just wasn't sure, like, where she was during all this time. It's also made clear later on that the Kaminoans are after Omega because of her DNA. It's something that we've all kind of uh, suspected when it comes to this show, that they're after Omega because of her DNA, and they had said that Omega... Uh, uh, Tex said that Omega was a Generation 1 uh, clone, but it do she doesn't have the genetic modifications or whatever, or not genetic modifications because Bad Batch only has those, but she doesn't have the growth acceleration like all the other clones do. And as they pointed out, the only other clone to have uh, had that is Boba. And Boba was the Alpha. That's what he was called. They said Boba was Alpha. And then there's the Omega. So I, that is kind of interesting, right? Like the Alpha being the start, the Omega being the end. Like I, I kind of find that ironic. So once we get to this one planet, and I forget the name of it. Uh, I don't even know if they mention it either. But she ends up, Omega ends up running away from Bane and Toto. She gets away for a bit. But then Bane comes after her. And then we hear a ship coming. And I'm like, I don't know if it's Bad Batch yet. It's too early. And then I started thinking, please let it be Fennec. That'd be so freaking cool if it was Fennec. Because then we could get Fennec versus Cad Bane. Sure enough, it was Fennec, and I was like, let's freaking go. The majority of this episode was basically a Cad Bane versus Fennec Shand fight. For once, D. Bradley Baker wasn't necessarily the center point of this episode. But hey, shout out to my man D. Bradley Baker, who has been freaking carrying this show on his back. Bane was telling Fennec, hey, you don't want to do this, and I'm like, uh, you know what? I think he may, he may not be wrong, Fennec. Like, you may, you want to retrace your steps here. I mean, 
mean, you, I, you weren't there when Hunter got shot, but I'm like, I don't want the same thing to happen to you too. Toto ended up coming from behind and stealing the credits, and then Bane started shooting at Fennec. Fennec started shooting back. They started like going after each other, punching each other, and everything. Eventually, there comes a point where the credits end up getting uh, falling because I think Fennec shoots it or throws a bomb on Toto or something like that. I can't remember. But then the credits fall, and then Bane gets all triggered because he's like, "No, my money." Which also, now that I'm thinking about it as well, Fennec ended up shooting Tan Wee because that was who she went there to meet was Tan Wee. But then I'm thinking like, wait a second. If she ended up shooting Tan Wee and she's working for someone else, could my theory of her working for Maul still be in effect? Uh, and to make a long story short, no, it's not. She's actually working for Lama, or not Lama Su, Lama Su's the head. Nala Say, yes, that's right, Nala Say. She's working for Nala Say, who I guess must have just hired Fennec on her own to make sure that uh, Omega stays alive, whereas Tan Wee hired Bane, and he obviously preferred for her to be alive, but I guess there probably was an exception for her to be dead as well. I mean, like the one guy said from Mandalorian, bounty hunting is a complicated profession. The fight between Bane and Fennec was obviously going to be a very interesting one. Bane obviously being the more experienced of the two, Fennec still new to the game, so I was very curious to see how this was going to turn out. I mean, I will say this much, Fennec put up a lot more of a fight than Hunter did, even though with Hunter, I think, here's the thing, I think if Hunter got into like a fist-to-fist -fist combat with Cad Bane, I think he would have stood a better chance, but because it was the gunslinger standoff, that was obviously Bane's specialty, and honestly, I think that had that would have, if that would have went down between Fennec and Bane, like the same thing, I think Bane would have won as well. I think he's just a pro when it comes to that, but because it was more hand-to-hand, -hand, they were both able to get some good shots in on each other. They tried to like lock each other up in headlocks and stuff, almost like a WWE type type match. Omega, meanwhile, is like running in all of this and just trying to escape, and she ends up going to a room where she finds like these back to tanks or whatever of these, you know, I don't know if they were clones or what the heck they were, but it was like, okay, this is very strange. And then she ends up trying to get out, but then Fennec gets to her and is like, hey, you need to come with me because I'm your best option right now. Your friends aren't gonna get here in time, but if you come with me, I can like promise you that you're gonna be safe. And Omega's like, yeah, but the last time I trusted you, that didn't work out so well. So, obviously, Omega ends up... She Omega, very smart, by the way. Like, she ends up running because Toto ends up distracting uh, Fennec. And then she drops one of the Bacta tanks on her. And then, like, whatever, all that, you know, Bacta or goo, whatever that was, just end up falling all over Fennec. Fennec and Bane get into another fight. And then there was a moment where Fennec had kicked Bane off of the ledge. And I'm like, oh, shoot, is is Bane gonna die here? And then I did start thinking, like, because Bane ends up surviving, but I thought, like, oh, like, what a way to establish Fennec Shan if she kills Cad Bane. Like, that would be, I think, a really cool way to put her over as, like, a top bounty hunter. Though, I think at the same time, you can still go the Boba Fett route, especially since Boba Fett is kind of known to be, like, the top bounty hunter in the galaxy. So, yeah, if they still decide to do that story for whatever reason, like, I know that took place in Clone Wars, but, I mean, hell, you could do it here. Or like, what's the difference? You know what I'm saying? Like, you can still, you could still get away with that story. However, I'm not sure if we're gonna see Cad Bane and Fennec again in this show. Because it seems like, you know, judging by the end of the episode, uh, Nala Say seems to be done with Fennec. And I'm not sure if we're gonna see Bane again unless Tanwi continues to pay him to go after the Bad Batch. Omega ends up getting away in this pod, but it ends up, you know, f it starts crashing or whatever. And I'm like, oh, shoot, like, Bad Batch, please get there, please get there, please get there. And sure enough, they got there. They got her out. Uh, I like that Wrecker was, like, the first one to be like, Omega, is that you in there? And it's like, you know, because of the friendship that they have. But then Omega getting onto the ship and her just being, like, so scared and being like, why why are the Kaminoans coming after me? What do they want with me? And then Echo, I think it was Echo that said, you, you better tell her hunter and then hunter tells her like you know you're you're a gen 1 clone you don't have the the growth acceleration or anything like that and they they want to use you you know and then you know, poor Omega's just sitting there scared. I also like that Hunter asked her, are you hurt? Because that was the other thing, uh, remember that cut in, like, one of the earlier episodes had asked Omega, like, after they were done dealing with the Nexu, he said, like, are you hurt? And then in the, the episode following that, 
Um, when Hunter went to check on her, like he checked on her, but he didn't say, are you hurt? But this time he did. So I, I just, I kind of found like a nice parallel there. That was cool. And then at the end of the episode, Hunter and Omega have a conversation. Hunter, you know, asks Omega, hey, you can't sleep. And I mean, with all good reason, I mean, like if the, if all these people are coming after me, like, I don't know if I'd be able to, to sleep either. And she sits there still worried, like, you know, they're just going to keep sending bounty hunters after us. And Hunter's like, yeah, I'm we're going to take care of them. And then, you know, she kind of just sits there all sad, like, you're not going to be able to fight them all. And Hunter just tries to reassure her, like, you're not going anywhere. We're not letting it happen, even though you let it happen last episode. But regardless, you're not being taken from us. You're not going back to Camino. And then she's like, you promise? And he's like, I promise. Which now worries me that she may end up being taken back to Kamino. So I hope it doesn't happen. I will admit, I'm actually surprised that the Bad Batch and Omega reunited so quickly. Like, I thought Omega was going to be on Kamino by the end of this episode or, like, the next episode. And then the Bad Batch would have to rescue her, like, in the finale or something like that. Like, that's kind of where I thought it was going to go. But I'm, I'm, I'm not sure where we go from here now. Like, if we're just going to continue to go on different adventures across different planets, kind of like we've been doing. Clearly, there's going to be bounty, more bounty hunters after them, though. So, here now it begs the question, are we going to start seeing more bounty hunters such as people like Boba Fett or Bosk or Aura Singh? Oh, wait, no. Aura Singh's supposed to be... Oh, no. Please don't tell me Aura Singh's going to show up and then um, Tobias Beckett shows up and then Tobias kills Aura and that's how they tell that story. Please don't do that, Dave. I think a Boba and Omega interaction could be interesting, especially because Boba Fett, I don't think is that much older than Omega. So very curious, or they, I don't know if they're necessarily the same age, but I know they would at least be around the same age. You know what I'm wondering? I'm wondering if there's a way to turn off all of the inhibitor chips, or at least in some of the clones, like simultaneously without, you know, like if the Kaminoans had like a kill switch or something like that of their own, because maybe that's a way for, like, Nala say to defect to the good side and then almost try to, like, correct the wrongs that she's done, like, within the show and then in within the Clone Wars as well with Fives and realizing, like, hey, I've done the wrong thing and now I want to try and help you guys because she clearly cares about Omega and she doesn't want, uh, Ton, or she doesn't want Ton Wee to or not Tan Wee, uh, I'm getting, I keep getting all the Kaminoan names mixed up. She doesn't want Lama Su to kill Omega, so maybe there's some kind of way for, like, maybe that's how we get some more clones back on our side. Is Bad Batch gonna end up finding Rex now because they realize, like, hey, the threat is imminent, we need people to protect Omega? The funny thing is, I know one of the complaints that people have had with the show is, like, oh, like, there, you know, nothing's being accomplished, like, what, what's the end game? We don't know what it is, which which I also don't see not knowing the end game as a bad thing because I don't think we have to know everything that's going on. I don't know. I think surprises can be kind of nice, but clearly some people think otherwise. But then apart from that, you guys, like you look at the story, it just seems like even Bad Batch doesn't necessarily know what they're doing. At the end of the day, they're just trying to survive in this, you know, ever changing galaxy. And now it almost feels like their priorities have kind of shifted to what they were originally going to do because of Omega, and I think that's where all the hesitation comes in from Hunter, is that, like, at the end of the day, they now have this little girl to take care of, and they have to think about her and what, you know, what's best for her. So, now it almost kind of just begs the question of, okay, well, now what's the best way for us to protect this girl? Because that's, I feel like that's what they're gonna do. I can't see them going back on regular missions again, and maybe they will, but I mean, surely they have to seek help help from someone if they're going to be that desperate to protect her because i mean and, and you, if you're th if you're hunter you've already lost this girl once from cad bane you can't afford to do it again and like omega said they're going to keep sending hunters like this is not going to stop until they get omega so they're going to need more help from somebody that someone could be rex it could be bail it could be that formation of the rebellion starting which could be interesting you could have maybe 
I don't know. I don't trust Sid, so don't don't go to Sid. Uh, and I can't trust any other bounty hunters either. But I mean, there could be a bunch of different people maybe that we could put some trust into. Maybe it's Cut and Sue. Maybe we go find them again. But I don't think they're gonna want to be put in immediate danger. But I'm guys. I'm very curious to see where this show goes. I'm absolutely loving it, and I hope I hope that this show continues past the season one. Now, like I said last week, if the if Dave finds it best that the story ends after one season, you know what? Cool. But at the end of the day, like that that inner Star Wars fan in me is saying, like, oh, I I would I would just love for this show to go for like the same length as Clone Wars. That's that's what I'd like to see. But we got to see where it goes. We got to see where the story takes us. But you guys, I absolutely love this show. Can you not tell? What do you guys think of the show? Do you guys like it? Do you not like it? If you don't like it, well screw you. No, but you guys are entitled to your opinions. Just be respectful about it in the comments. Um, that's gonna wrap us up here for here today. Thank you guys so much for watching. Be sure to like this video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Share this video around as it really helps support the channel, and I will see you guys next time. This is the way. This is the way.